What's going on guys, John Elder here from CodyMe.com and in this video, we're going to build the card game War for PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to build the card game War, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodyMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. All right, like I said, in this video, we're going to expand on the last video and build out the card game War. And if you played War when you were a kid, it's just a very, very basic card game. Each player gets one card and the person with the highest card wins. So we want to do that, determine who wins, and also keep track of the score, and then at the end say who won, and then start over. So like I said, we're going to take what we learned in the last video. If you didn't see that, check it out. And we're going to expand it into this game. In the next couple of videos, we'll probably expand into more difficult card games like Blackjack or whatever. But this is a nice little jumping off point. So you can see as we go through here, the dealer wins this one because queen is higher than four. Uh, let's see. Oh, the dealer's winning all of them. This time the player wins. Now it says player wins over here because queen is higher than five. And we can see up here, the dealer has won ten times. The player has won five times. So we can keep going through here. And as our cards, you know, get to the end of the deck, there's zero cards left. If we play again, boom, you see the game is over. Dealer wins 13 to 12. So that's what we're going to be building out in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other PyQt5 videos in the series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So a couple of things. In the last video, I set things up as globals, the deck, and the players. I don't know why I did that. I think I was still thinking in Kinter from the day before. So instead of that, I changed all these to self dot whatever, self.deck and self.dealer and self.player, got rid of this global thing. We don't need to do that. And then just went through here. And every time we reference deck in the past, like here and here, I just changed it to self.deck. Same thing with dealer and player. I just went through here and changed all those to self.dealer, uh, self.player, etc. So definitely go ahead and do that. And the next thing we want to do is fiddle with the labels at the top of the cards. We need to change those a little bit. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my C PyQt5 directory, got my virtual environment turned on, and let's just run the designer. And then let's open up that deck file from the last video, go to our PyQt5 directory and search for deck.ui. And so here I'm going to make this a little bigger, something like that. And then I'm gonna come down here and change the font size to this to like 12. Same thing here, I'm gonna make this the whole size of the card a little bigger. We go. Same thing, come through here, font size 12. That's a little bigger. And now we want to justify this text on the right side instead of the left side. So we can just come down here, to our text and align right. Okay, so that will bop that over. Okay, I think that looks a little bit better. So let's come up here and go file save as and I'm going to save this as a different name. Let's call this war instead of deck two. So okay, there we go. So let's head back over to our code. And now this is the deck.py code from the last video. I'm going to rename this as war.py. And we need to come in here and change this to war.ui. Let's save this and run it just to make sure that looks okay. Let's go Python war.py. So, okay, I think that looks a little bit better. And we're good to go. So now let's come through here and let's create a mechanism to keep track of the score. So no big deal, super easy. We just want to come through here first to our shuffle. And at the bottom of this, let's say determine score. And let's just call self dot score the function. Now we don't have this yet. So we'll have to create it. And the same thing in our deal cards instead of our try block here. Let's at the end of this, after we shuffled out the cards, let's call this score function. Okay, so now we need a score function. So let's define score, we want to pass in self as always. Okay, so in the last video, whenever we created cards, right, for the dealer, and for the player, I just called this card. So we need to determine whether it's a dealer card or a player card. So I'm going to come through here. And I'm going to rename this to self dot dealer underscore card. So now we can copy this every time we see a card. We need to change that. So there, there, and there. So that looks good there. I'm going to do the same thing for the player. So self dot player underscore card. And again, we need to copy this. So boom, boom, and boom. 
Okay, so that's good for that function. We need to do the same thing in our deal card section. So here's the dealer. So let's go self dot dealer underscore card. And again, copy this to there, there, and there. And then we need to do the same thing to self dot player underscore card. And again, copy, paste, paste, and paste. Okay, so now we can reference these cards down here in our score function. And you remember the cards are of the format of like three underscore of underscore hearts or something like that. You know, the ace is the 14 of, I don't know, spades, whatever, something like that. So we need to take all of this and strip out everything after the underscore. So we just have the card number. So then we can compare which one was higher, right? So we can do this a bunch of different ways. I'm just going to call self dot dealer underscore card. And I'm going to set that equal to the integer because this will be a string initially. Uh, we need to turn it into a, an, an integer. And then I'm going to call self dot dealer underscore card dot split. And we want to split out everything after the underscore. And since there's more than one underscore, we need to designate, hey, take the first one. And then we need to return the zeroth item of this list because what this is essentially doing is it's a splitting this apart into two things, its own little list, and the zeroth part will be that first number, the three, the 14, whatever. The next part will be the underscore of underscore parts or whatever. So the zeroth item is the first item, the number, that's what we want to return. So that looks good. So we could do the same thing to the player card. And we need to change this to player card. Okay, so now let's just print out the self.dealer card. And let's print out the self.player card just to make sure that worked. So let's save this, run it. Okay, so we got a four and an eight. If we close this, boom, four and eight. All right, so that looks like that worked. Piece of cake. So let's say strip out the card number. So now we have these numbers, we can compare the card numbers, right? So the first thing we need to figure out is, hey, was there a tie or not? So let's go if self dot dealer underscore card equals self dot player underscore card, then this is a tie. So let's say tie. So what do we want to do? Well, remember, we've got the text above each card that says dealer and player. That's uh, this and this. We can just update those texts whenever we want to say who won or whether or not it's a tie. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's copy this guy. Come back down here and let's say self dot dealer header label dot set text. And we could just set this to tie. And if we copy this and the next one will be the player header label. And now let's also update our title. There we go. And we might also want to say what the current score is. So we could say dealer, bop, bop, player, bop, bop, something like that. Get some spacing in there. So what are the scores? Well, we haven't actually done anything with that yet. Let's come up here to our shuffle function real quick. And where we've defined everything, let's also keep track of scores. And I'm going to call self dot dealer underscore score. And I'm just going to set that equal to zero self dot player underscore score. Also set that equal to zero. And now anytime a player wins a point, we'll just increment this little counter. So we can take this dealer underscore score and player underscore score and come back down here to our score section here and pass those into our title bar if we want. So this one will obviously be the player score. Okay. So, okay, that looks good. If there was a tie, we're good to go there. So next, let's say dealer wins. So let's create an LF for our if statement here. And let's say self dot dealer underscore card is greater than self dot player underscore card, then we could just come up here and copy all of this. And this will we'll say here dealer wins. And here we might say player loses. I don't know. <laughs> right. 
We really want to rub it in. This will stay the same. And finally, let's go else. And here, let's say player wins. And again, we could just sort of copy this. Paste this in. And we want to change this to dealer loses. And player wins. Okay. So let's go ahead and save this, run it, see if that worked. We did a bunch of stuff really quickly there. See if we messed this up. So right off the bat, the player has a queen and the dealer has a three. So the player wins. Up here, we haven't updated anything yet. So let's do that real quick. So here, when there's a tie, we don't have to do anything. But here, let's update score. And this is just going to be self.dealer underscore score plus equals one. And we can do the same thing down here. Self dot player underscore score plus equals one. Okay, that should do the trick there. Let's run this guy again. Okay, so the dealer wins this time up here because there's seven is bigger than six. Up here it says dealer one, player zero. So let's play again. Dealer wins again, two zero, three zero. Wow, the dealer is crushing it. Oh, finally, player wins. There's this player wins over here, dealer loses. Very cool. Now you might wanna make this a little more interesting, maybe change the color of your label here when somebody wins or loses. I, I don't know, whatever you wanna do, you can you know, play around with this. You can put a little pop-up box, you can make another label down here that flashes up that says dealer wins or you know whatever you wanna do, you can go ahead and do that. So, okay, this is looking good. Now, if we come through here and keep playing till the end of the deck, Two cards, zero cards, boom. Now just this game over. Well, who won, who lost? I don't know, we need to know that. So let's play with that. So let's come up here to our try block for our deal cards. So here, here's the accept block. This gets called whenever the game is over because there are no cards left. And instead of throwing an error, it throws this thing that says game over. So instead of that, let's do some logic. So let's go if self.dealer underscore score is equal to self dot player underscore score, right? Obviously it's a tie. So we can grab this and let's say game over. I don't know, tie. And then something to something. And we need to make this into an F string. It wasn't before. So here we could say self dot dealer underscore score to Self dot player underscore score. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this because I think we're going to probably need it some more. So otherwise, we can go L if, and let's comment here tie, and let's comment here dealer wins. L if self dot dealer underscore score is greater than self dot player underscore score, then we can say dealer wins and the dealer score to the player score. Finally, player wins. We can just go else and paste in this guy player wins. And then we want to change this to player score. So player score to dealer score. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and save this and run it, see if that worked. All right, so we can fly through here, ba, 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 ba. winning, losing, 18, 12, four cards, two cards, zero cards, boom, dealer wins 15 to 10. Okay, let's play again. See if we can get the player to win one, not this game. Dealer wins again, <laughs> dealer's on fire today. All right, so let's see. Uh, it's looking pretty good now. There we go. Player wins 16 to 10. Now, obviously, you could play around with this formatting up here. Take out these little bars if you want. You could put a pop-up that comes up that says, hey, player wins. Wh whatever you want to do, you could play around with the design of this. It's the functionality that we really care about and uh, seems to be working pretty good. We can shuffle, start over. Everything gets reset. Pretty easy. Now, I know this is a very basic game, but you know, at least sort of allows us to start playing with logic 
and creating rules for the games and things like that. And like I said, we'll progress to harder games in the future, but yeah, just getting started. Everybody likes war. <laughs> so that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeb.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. That's access to all my courses, over 48 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeb.com, and I'll see you in the next video.